too. Oh, good. I love questions. <laughs> good, good morning, morning and good afternoon. Good afternoon. If you're in Michigan, yeah. hi, everybody, and welcome to Sprinkle, Sprinkle Ponds. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're here live or you're watching us in the replay, you guys, let me say hi to my beautiful guest, Arielle Funderburg. All the way from You said that right. Both like Ariel and Funderburg. So good job, right. Marlo. <laughs> good morning, Heather. I mm -hmm. love that she comes. So my my dad, my whole family is from Monterey, California. And Heather um Hansen, she's also a part of the barn. Um, she lives lives there. So it's kind of it's kind of crazy just how small our world really is. It's so and look at because of these opportunities with online conferencing we get to be everywhere at the same time and it's so beautiful and first of all hi heather welcome alma hello alma. yes i'm gonna share watch, as well yeah they watch from there's um tracy o'neill watches from south africa there's somebody that watches from australia it's wonderful so the whole point is god is good and god is all over so yes. i love the fact that people can join in and you know that was uh it's funny i wasn't even planning on this being a, a segue, but we'll get into this in just a minute. But the chapter that you wanted to focus on is Einstein and Newton. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But that was all uh, talking about the season of COVID. And in this uh -huh. video conferencing and these opportunities are a lot of it happened because of COVID. So yeah. Ariel, thank you for joining us from Redding, California. So it's yeah. nine o'clock there. So I saved a uh, a little bit of coffee time to have with you. I know I, I made tea this morning. I, we just, so this week, my husband's working Monday through Saturday, 12 hour shifts. And we get up at four 30 and we go to the gym together at four 50. Uh -huh. Um, and then he works his, his shift. But this week we've had a lot of later nights. We don't go to bed late, but like we've had soccer and soccer goes to like eight 30. So by the time you get home, you get like into bed and all the things like, it's like nine 30. So last night, again, we went to bed late this morning, our alarms went off and we're like, yeah, nope, <laughs> not yeah, going. You to know what? This morning. Thank you for calling. We're not uh, doing this today. It's yeah. Like uh -uh. And you guys, Ariel, you may recognize Ariel. We, Ariel and I both are so blessed. Trust me, it's a blessing. Honored. We know that and an honor to both serve at Barn 45, which is here in Michigan. And Ariel joins on Tuesday mornings, 9 a.m. Eastern. So that's 6 a.m. your time, Ariel. Obviously, you know that I'm telling the people. And you join live to do a Bible study every Tuesday morning with Sue Weiberg. So thank you for that dedication. But that means you have to get up even earlier, ready to go and on camera and talking about Jesus early in the morning. Yep. Talking about <laughs> Jesus is right. You know what's crazy too? When they asked me to do that, like um, my husband immediately was like, yes, you say yes. You say yes to God. You say yes. But I had, and now, now I can look back and see. Um, I mean, I, I was wise. I prayed about it and stuff, but there was a spirit of like, I can't do this. I'm uh, like oppression. Like why? No, I can't do this. Like two, two, like one day a week, it's going to be too much. It's, you know, and I don't, I don't work, but I do work. Like mm -hmm. I have a, I have a very, I'm my sobriety oh, still. Right. still I, yeah. And, and I have kids and I'm still learning my, um, my faith walk justification, all that cut sanctification. But, um, yeah. So when they asked me, it was, it was scary. And now I can look back and realize that cause it's now it's, it's always still scary. Like I still get nervous. There's still, you know, some, some of that, but, um, I oh, realized that it mean? was more. Yeah. 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 Every mm -hmm. Tuesday morning I'm still, and I don't do notes. Everybody know, like, obviously I'm probably the only one I really can't do notes because if I do, and I'm trying to read off my notes, I cannot, I can't, yeah. I can't do both. I don't yeah. know what it is, but, um, anyway, so it's a very humbling and very dependent place yeah. to be. It, it's, it's a beautiful opportunity. I, I feel the same way. I've been so blessed and honored and, um, you know, we walk in feeling in our own flesh, we can feel so ill-equipped, but we know that he will equip us. If he calls us and when we've prayed about it and we know that's where we're supposed to be, he equips us and he grows us and, and, and helps us to speak from his heart, which comes through ours. And it's amazing. It's, it's, and, and you're incredible, Ariel. It's amazing that you don't use notes. And I love that you speak from your heart, whatever he gives you. So 
Thank you for serving there. Barn 45, if you're not familiar with Barn 45, you can go to barn45.org, Barn 45 on YouTube or Facebook. And it's been happening since, again, since COVID, where it's been daily Bible study during the week. So, Ariel, let me pray for okay. us. And, and then, then if we'll... you wouldn't mind, I know you don't mind uh, praying right. at the end when we're done, yep. because the whole, the whole idea here is to glorify God. So let's start by, by handing this over to him. Lord, Good morning. Good afternoon. We are so honored to be sitting here in your presence, Lord, both of us from so far away. We know that your presence is with both of us, whether here in Michigan, whether uh, in California. And as we talked about the, 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 the ability to do this virtually, well, that is amazing to us, but you get to do this because you are all over with all of us through your Holy Spirit. And we are so thankful that the Holy Spirit can live within us. We get to carry your spirit with us daily. And that's what we're here to talk about today, Lord, is just how to glorify you in the everyday of our everyday stories and the magnificence of what you do. And I love hearing what Ariel, the things that she has to share, the journey that she's been through. And what I love the most is the people and the hearts that she is going to affect you're going to affect through her just by her telling her story. Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this wish of peace to build this little space called the cubbyhole. And thank you for the notion that it would be a ripple effect out into the world. I knew that from the beginning. And as I sit here every time and I get to talk with somebody, it's a beautiful reminder of the magnificence of your power when we get to lean into the Holy Spirit. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, amen. Well, let me just share a couple of things. One is if you're brand new here uh, and you're wondering, what is a sprinkle pod? I just landed on this thing. Well, I was blessed to write a book uh, two or three years ago called God Sprinkles. Here it is. It's sitting right here. Uh, it, God, Jesus sat right alongside of me. I wrote stories about the God sprinkles in my life, which are really God sprinkles um, are known as the more formal term is providence, which is the supernatural of God being revealed in the natural of every day. Mm -hmm. And then he whispered it into my heart to do sprinkle pods, which is to take my stories and talk to other women about their stories that they relate with. But my book, that book, God Sprinkles, it's wonderful. And I, it was a wonderful opportunity, but this is the book that we're talking about today. It's an, mm -hmm. it's an avenue. It's a vehicle to lead back to God and his word and his promises. And we can do that by sharing our own God Sprinkles and how we can relate through those every day. So I am sitting, somebody said to me, where are you sitting when you do these? I am in what's called the cubby hole. It's so cool. We played, I went there at Christmas <laughs> and it was so much fun down in her basement. I thought, oh. I never thought I'd have so much fun in a basement. <laughs> I know. Like the the oh. dial tone, like phone. And like, I have something so for you down there. It was so cool. Ariel, I have something to show you. I have something uh, to show you. Yes. So here, I know I have basements, FYI, in California. Like, I don't, I, I don't know a single person that has really. A so, oh my yeah. gosh, a, a basement is an opportunity, and all the storage areas to just collect a lot more stuff. Yeah, like, I, have I no probably story. shouldn't have a basement, but the the cubby hole is a space in our basement where. God gave me this whisper several years ago, I think, well, years ago, to build the space to do comedy, to do speaking, and now to do these virtual events, which is so exciting. Um, but Ariel, my guests often are sitting right here next to oh, me. No. But what I love about Sprinkle Pods is really, and I just want to say this too, any of you that have, have read Spr uh, God Sprinkles and you want to be on a Sprinkle Pod, that was the idea is to reach out to women that don't do this every day. They're not online. Uh, just to hear from any woman that has uh, been affected by a story in, in, in God's Sprinkles. But that's not what, here's where I was going with this. I wish you were here, but as you just said, you visited here, you were here in uh, at Christmas mm -hmm. to be here for some of the Barn 45 um, festivities. And so we took some pictures of you. And as Arielle was saying, she was, she loved this phone. I love that phone. Look what I have. Oh my gosh. I <laughs> loved it. It was so much fun. Those are such cute pictures. You like, are with I, us. I remember those phones. Cause I, we didn't have cell phones, you know, back. No. My husband was cracking me up because I was looking for pictures of my son, baby pictures for a senior year. 
And I could not find any that were digital. And my husband goes, there's a reason why you don't have <laughs> digital pictures. And I'm like, why? He goes, babe, we didn't have cell phones back then. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I know that phone. I tell you, those phones are so funny. The, when you wanted to talk to somebody on the phone, I think a lot of you will relate with this. You just pulled that cord into the bathroom or wherever yep. you can have some privacy to have a private phone call. Oh my goodness. I love it. Well, I love that picture of you. I do too. It was so much fun. We had such a good time and I was there for a very short, it was a short week, but um, yeah. Hi everybody. Ellie yes. and Tracy. There, Tracy, yes. she's from, she's the one from South Africa. Yes, she is. Yep. She's yeah. right here. Hi yeah. Tracy from South Africa. Well, Ariel, let's dive in. I know oh. that when we originally talked, uh, yes. and by the way, Ariel was on a porch pod that I had this mm -hmm. summer. So I will attach that link, that YouTube link in the comments here, because it's so powerful. She talked about her story. You guys, Arielle is um, a recovering uh, addict. I, mm -hmm. I want to speak for you, but a recovering addict in, in drugs and alcohol. And your story Amen. because of God is so powerful. And I'm mm -hmm. going to attach that so they can you know, get caught up. And I'm sure some of the story will trickle into our time together today. But you um, originally, when you said yes, and thank you for saying yes to a sprinkle pod, when you said yes, originally um, you were, there was one chapter that really spoke to you. And then you said that you were looking over the chapter. Too, but the Einstein yeah. one, and, and that's, that will just bring us to the fact that I'm on a sprinkle pod because um, I, you know, I'm only, so five years, May 27th, 2024 will be five years sober. And, um, I would say since 2020, um, August 6th of 2020 was the first episode that I ever watched of Barn 45. Mm -hmm. And, um, that is really when I got introduced because uh, I've been, this is what we talked about before, that knowing the truth and believing the truth are two different things. And I believe that I knew the truth my whole life growing up. Mm -hmm. I was told the truth of God. I was told the truth of Jesus, all of those things. Um, I asked Jesus into my heart because that's, again, another thing that I think we, um, the church kind of um, makes it seem like you just got to ask him into your heart and then you don't, then that's it. And yeah. so that's what I believed for uh, so long, but there was no power behind my life. There was no nothing that changed, nothing transformed, nothing, anything. But I do believe the Holy Spirit worked in me. And I'm so grateful that I, just because I asked him into my heart, I didn't, nothing. I got worse and worse mm -hmm. and worse. And I'm grateful for that. So when Barn 45 came in, they were the first person to really, we, I memorized, I went to a Christian school, you know, until eighth grade. And then I went to Simpson university, which it was a Christian university. And there was all these rules and behaviors and all these things, but, um, and you had to memorize scripture. Like that was the thing you memorize scripture. And I think we do a disservice in, in, uh, Sunday school by just telling kids to memorize a verse instead of actually pulling out your Bible and reading your Bible. Yes. Yes. I don't think, I think we're doing a disservice to everybody because finally when 2020 rolls around, I'm, I don't remember how old I was. Well, it's, I'm 42 now, but anyway, around 38 or 39, but, um, someone actually told me, pick up your Bible and read it. And so that's what they gave me was discipleship. And yeah. that is where the power was, was in that. Because this whole time I'm thinking, well, everyone's saying sleeping around and doing mess and, and snorting cocaine and all these things are bad, but how do you not do them? Because, mm -hmm. because my flesh is so drawn to them. And so I'm like, I, I asked God. So anyway, so knowing the truth and believing the truth were two different things. And right. so those reconciled for me three years ago. Um, on August 6th, 2020, when I first saw, um, you know, barn 45. So, and the discipleship that has come out of that has been incredible. So for three years until September of 2023, I was on the other side of the screen. Mm -hmm. I was watching like everybody else and I was gleaning and I was in my room and I was reading the word of God on my own. And so, um, and 
and drop the labels were dropping off me. And, you know, I wasn't white knuckling sobriety anymore. And so not only was I starting to get clean from all the things, you know, I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. I was smoking meth. I was eating meth. I had an overdose from cocaine, which is super hard to do. Um, I had boyfriends. I, and I married at the time, you know, like I was seeing someone, I, you know, had just so many different things. And so the, the, when I found really found Jesus and those things started to drop off, not only did that start to happen, but my house and my life started to simplify. And so as that, you know, as that went on simplifying just down to getting rid of tons of clothes and cleaning. Yes, and cleaning. I remember that you were putting, yeah, things in I just, stuff. it was my whole entire life was like that. So, so then come three years into this discipleship program and being alone with God, um, he then had joy in the summer of this last year. I've come, this will be our fourth year coming over to Michigan for mm -hmm. uh, baptism. She asked, she knows, just be thinking we're, we're kind of mulling around, maybe having you on, you know, as a, as, a as a leader. And I'm thinking, oh my God, immediately almost fear entered my heart. Like I, I can't do that. Like I just no, no, no. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And um, thank God I had my husband because my husband really, and I didn't realize it really was Satan at the time that was putting this oppression on me saying, no, yeah. you, no, you, you're right. not speaking. You're not going to do this. Um, anyway, so, so to come full circle now to be able to pour out what I was given, mm -hmm because this really saved my life. Mm -hmm. And I found Jesus through, through Barn 45. I believe in him wholeheartedly. There's a boldness and a boldness because it's the supernatural that's inside of me. I can walk that identity out. And so, um, it, you know, in reading that chapter, I was like, I always had a desire to be known, and to be famous or yeah. whatever it was. Oh, I love that they do that. Or you can go like this. I, I wonder. I don't know how that happens. I know. I don't I know. Don't know. I think if you put your, I don't know. We were trying to figure that out the other day because it's it, funny it, though. Not, you know, so you, when you read Einstein and Newton, what, mm -hmm. what you, what relate you related with was the isolation. Yeah. But what I'm hearing you say is we can naturally think like in that chapter, I was frustrated. I'm alone. Where, where's my answer? God, right? Where's the, it's right. a vending machine, right? Don't I put in my prayer request and it falls. That's being right. completely sarcastic. We know that's not the case. Uh, but you felt it, he uses the isolation. And it, like I said, it, we're all pointing back to this word and so many people in God's word were in isolation and that's where he does his best work. We know because we're covering Genesis at the barn, right? Mm -hmm. And Joseph was alone in a pit and he does his best work there. And that's what I'm hearing you say that you're relating with so much is that we trust his power in it. His reason. Yeah, I had to get alone. That was the first, but I also had to know where to go. And so he was teaching me in that time, um, you know, where to go and who to go. Cause I only just started to go to church again, also in October of 2023. So mm -hmm. I wasn't going to church and I was alone and it, and it really did save my life because that's the other thing is that when you know the truth and then you finally believe the truth, when you walk out to go find a community of people, mm -hmm. you know, if it's real or not, mm -hmm. I can see the difference between authentic Christianity yeah. and, and a fake Christianity. And so I was able to walk into churches and know this is where God wants me, or this is where God doesn't want me. And so now I'm in a community that I trust. Now we're all human. So don't get me wrong. Like, it's not like I'm, I went in here and I was like, yeah, everybody's perfect, blah, blah, blah. You know, and these other churches are not, that wasn't the case. It's just that I knew and the, the, the heart posture of the church itself was the heart posture that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And so, um, a, can we just talk about that for a second? Yeah. Uh, that you're talking about heart posture and that's what God is looking at in us is our heart mm -hmm. posture. Right. It's it, And I love that you're talking about the doing. Can I just read something really quick? I, yeah. I know that it's, I just read this this morning and I'm doing my own little study every day in, in Peter and it's first Peter one 17. And it says, 
Oh, I love this one. And remember that the heavenly father to whom you pray has no favorites. It says, I, it says he will judge you. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. And I wrote in my journal and it it's to the point of what you're saying. I wrote in my journal to my younger self and said, if my younger self would have answered that, I would have thought that he was talking about what you do. Like, you know, right. how many memorized prayers or how many things do you do or how much are you involved and in? how many I would run myself ragged. And I know you probably did too, trying to do and do and do, but it's I not the performer. For it's sure. not the doing, it's not being the performer. It is about our hot heart posture and posturing our heart um, to the faith, having the faith in the grace and all that he gives. It's, it's, he wants our heart. He doesn't want our to-do list. Uh -uh. It, and that's exactly to your point. It's so in line with, it's a little sprinkle because I was just reading about that this morning, but continue. Yeah, with, he oh, doesn't even want cool. my sobriety. That's not what he was looking for to begin with. He used um, it. He used all of it. Yeah. He used all of it. He, he was just looking for my heart. And so once my heart came and it was involved, then, um, it, 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 that everything changed it. This is so funny. So I, I don't know why, but so this is like a little, it's my allergy medication box. So when you're, the, when you get the 2 AM, uh, wake up call this and you got to find something to write on. Yeah. What happened? Like, I love that. I'm going to turn my phone on because it'll wake your brain up more, but sometimes you just got to get it out. Um, I just literally, like, yeah, I have so to tell you something. I just, I just got, oh, so go ahead, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt uh, you. Oh, no, I was just looking, um, uh, Rachel Powers, which is, you know, Lori's, um, yes. in law and I love Lori and I'm sure you guys know that because yes. you stay with them. But she was saying that her husband, um, cause I know that he was stuck in bed from back pain and stuff. And so that's what happened to him was yeah. when he was stuck and isolated, like, you know, you just, yes. and, and that's the thing is God uses everything to draw us closer to him. And unfortunately, the world wants you to draw away from him. Satan wants that yes. separation. And so um, I, yeah, I'm I'm grateful that we had that shutdown moment because I was still crying out. And when you're crying out for really the simplicity of the gospel, that's what I was crying out for. I was crying out for the power. I was crying out for Jesus because I knew him, but I didn't really truly believe in him and I didn't know how to find him. And so that's why I'm so passionate. And so it's incredible to me to see where I've come from. And then to be on this side of the screen yes. now and be able to share that posture um, yeah. that I was, you know, lived into because we need to live worthy of the gospel so that chosen, so that those that are already chosen, because we were chosen before we were even born. Mm -hmm. So if I can live worthy of the gospel and live into the gospel and abide in the gospel truth, which is just, it's very, very simple. Then people that are already chosen are going to be drawn to me yes. because of that. Not because of what I say, not because I tell them stop being gay or don't be straight or get married or mm -hmm. don't get married or be Protestant or be Catholic or, or read this or read that. That's not, that's not what I'm, that's not even what you should be preaching and, or even going to church. Like, it's just not about that. And so mm -hmm. I'm so passionate. I thought I was passionate. I'm actually passionate about all people, but I really thought I would be drawn to the addicts and to the people that are marginalized and scrutinized and all that. But since finding this, I'm actually more drawn to the church people now because I do believe that there's a lot of us going to church and a lot of us doing the do and <laughs> say, say and <laughs> being the be and all the things. <laughs> and we have no idea who yes. Jesus is. No, we are not walking not. out in power. And when I say boldness, it's not the boldness to speak. It's supernatural boldness that I could never possess without him. Mm -hmm. And so- I actually have a passion for people that are walking around like zombies and don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. Like that's walking God around with, the, that. with their eyes wide shut. I say that all the time. Um, that's they, why wake up gave the, me, that's why the, the chapter before Einstein, which is the wake up sleeper, yeah. that wake up one. Oh that yeah. Also, can I, can I just want to, before you move on, I want the couple things that you oh, yeah, said, you, you talked about us being chosen. Yeah. And what were woven in our mother's womb. He knew exactly how he made us. And I just wanted to give a shout out to Linda Renfro, who is on here right now. And Linda, I just want to say, I watched oh, half of your episode. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're sometimes on the stream when one time we, we, I, 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 I'm sorry. It cuts you out. I'm so sorry. What did you just say? Oh, did you just say Linda Renfro? This Linda Renfro. Yeah. 
she was on Barn 45 today and I caught half of it. She was on with Joy and she was quoting Psalm 139, how we're woven in our mother's womb. He knows, he knows already. He knows our story. We are chosen. And, and digging in, that's that, to that point, Ariel, that's one of the things when we are just reciting. And th there's, you know, a lot of my uh, friends that they do recite prayers, they say that they find comfort in that. There's nothing wrong with that it, at all, at all, period. It's not about that. It's that I had to ask myself, I can speak about it from the lens of myself. As I went through my journey, am I digging into his word? And I, am I learning his truth? Am I, am I talking to him when I'm in, in traffic and in the shower and all the times and not just leaning on, I have to do enough, but I just wanted to give Linda Renfro a shout out because she did, you did a wonderful job today, Linda. And I know Linda is bedridden. So there's a, another example of isolation, which uh, unbelievable that she was on today. And that's what you were on um, uh, talking about. So also to your point about walking around with our eyes wide shut. Yes. Ephesians 514, wake up sleeper. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, every word of that scripture means so much. Wake up sleeper, mm -hmm. rise, not just get out of bed, not just open your eyes, but rise up. There's that song, Rise Up, that I love. Rise from the dead. It's not the, the dead dead. It's the, the daily living dead. dead. And yeah. Christ will shine his light on you. And, and, and that's a promise. And giving us a direction. Wake up. You know, rise. He will shine his light on us. And that's, part, that's, that's on us to, um, to, to ask him. It's part of the the surrendering is to ask him, let him know. You know, we we want we want to lean in on him. So speak to that. I know that meant something yeah. to you. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, and this is such a simple example, but um, so so when I talk about power, it 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 is really simple. And so I'm in my in my Bible daily, and um, that has really truly given me the power to live out my day to day life. Mm -hmm. And because your flesh, while we live on this earth, is always going to come up, there's always going to be flesh fighting, fighting spirit. It's just the way it is. But because I'm in my word and because I'm abiding, that power even helps me with the simplest things. And so this is the simplest example I can give. We are in a, um, my husband switched careers at 40. I know a lot, some people there's overlap, you know, hi, Tina Larson. I love you. I can't wait to see you this summer, but anyway. Oh, okay. and Lauren. Um, anyway, so we have, um, we have been in a financial, so he was very set. We had, the insurance he made, I mean, he was running, you know, seven hospitals. There was, you know, in medical field and stuff. And so we were set and, um, and we switched careers in the middle of his life, which was a godsend. This is where God had him. This is his purpose. He is a civil servant to the heart of who he is. Mm -hmm. That is his character. It's down deep and embedded in him. And it has brought my husband back from the dead, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, because the other job really wore him out, but we made all the money. And this job is just, it's giving him life. So mm -hmm. anyways, we're in this season um, of, of, of strapped, but I've also seen miracles, which is so cool too. I actually like the fact, I don't like it in the moment. There is uncomfortability yeah. right now. Right. My son is a senior. We have a lot of extras and we don't have extra. So, so the extra is coming from outside sources, outside of my control, which has been incredible to watch, but the uncomfortability until it gets to the point where there's a release is been hard for me and hard for my husband, especially. So, um, anyway, I was meeting, I wanted a matcha tea and I was driving and I really wanted a matcha tea because I was just tired and things like that. And just, it gives you, it does help your dopamine level, right? It just sparks that dopamine, but God gave me the power. So immediately my flesh pops in. I want to stop and get one, but I had the power not to, because I can't spend that. That's, that's something like we're even to that there. You can't even spend five to 10 bucks. So, um, but he gave me the power to withstand that flesh that came up that I wanted it. Yeah. And then guess what happened? Three days after that, I get a email with a gift card to heritage for my matcha tea that I get at, at 
at church. So God will do that. So he gives you the power to withstand. And then he also overly abundantly provides. And I don't know how anybody knew that I get matcha from heritage. You know, I must've said it on barn. 45. It was from someone from barn 45. They didn't, um, tell me, but unbelievable. I know. As little things like that. And so the power to withstand not going, um, it came up immediately and it was, it helped me to, to take that flesh out. And then he abundantly provided after it for me. Abundantly. So yeah. Yep. Hmm. It I love that big, story. And I, it is so simple, but I think about those things. And then, and I'm a gift. So gifts are my love language. And when I say they're my love language, I mean, they are far above. I've taken that test twice. And every single time it's like, there's a huge gap in between gifts and all the other love languages. Mm -hmm. So um, the week that I was really struggling Easter week, um, there was, I was struggling with my flesh. We also had some things that were going on, you know, in the leadership or whatever, that was just, it was just a little bit of a, it was hard. It was hard on my brain. And I really wanted to focus on Jesus. This was the reason for the season. And my brain was wanting to pull me away from him and get my heart fluttered and involved and my flesh, I call it the fleshly flutter. And so it was really, it was a struggle for me, struggle, struggle. And someone, um, not someone, Debbie, she gave these to you guys on at Christmas, but she, but I don't live there. So I didn't I get mine. them. Right. I love them. So I got it the week that I was struggling in See? the mail from her with the sweetest card. Um, and I th thought that's God, that's our Jesus. That's, that's, mm -hmm. you know, right. so Rachel Powers just said it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy. Beautiful. How God always yeah. provides. I love those stories, Ariel. He's in it. He's in it. And it's not just a matter of doing, it's a matter of abiding and trusting. And I, I would love for a couple things. There's a couple of things that you've said. I, I just, I'm listening, I'm listening. And I'm I love that you listen. You're very good at this. You know, this. Oh, oh I love very this. good, Marlo. I, I love this. I love hearing women's stories. Everybody. I love hearing stories. I love it because I can see God in all of it. All So a couple things that you said. Well, first of all, I want to go back. I'm going to write the second thing down so that I don't forget. But one thing I'd love for you to emphasize, if you would, is go, go back to isolation for a second, okay. because you are a recovering addict. And mm -hmm. in that, the, um, the enemy wants to keep us um, alone and isolated. That's where he does. He can do his best work. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and there's a, there's a, there's a time and a place for every season and yeah. you've lived, you've lived all of this. And then we also know that God does his best work in the isolation. Mm -hmm. So there's like the line down the middle, but not really like God's covering it all. But would you just talk about those, those two sides? Because you've got, you know, Linda Renfro, who is bedridden. I know I have another comedian. I have a comedian buddy who has been bedridden. Uh, I know a lot of people that are struggling with addiction, a lot of people struggling with shame, young girls who have been violated, who are isolating their story. And obviously we have to use discernment on who to tell just all you get all the examples. Would right. you just speak to that? Because you've lived it all just the line between the two. <laughs> yeah, well, I, no, yeah. Now we're doing the, yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah. So, so isolation for me now, if, again, if I hadn't found barn 45, the isolation would have been a lot different. It would have looked a lot different. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that really is what saved my life. But I was a, so I was a performer, so, mm -hmm. and a chameleon. And so I would go into, if I went into a party, one group would say they knew they, they would know two different people because I would become what those two groups of people would want me to become. And so I was very easily influenced. I think we all are to really by labels. My whole life I've been labeled and I became what people said about me always. And so, um, the isolation was good for me. And actually the drugs and alcohol were good for me because people in my life could not help me. 
They could not help me because they, they had never gone through that or walked through that. Mm -hmm. So the only person that truly could help me was Jesus. And it has to get like that for everybody where there is no outside influences, not even a pastor, um, because that's watered down version of what God's going to give you. We don't, I don't want a watered down gospel. Mm -hmm. And so the only way to get to the actual power is to only have one voice mm -hmm. for a very long time, truthfully. Mm -hmm. And you have to get down to desperation. I had already tried it all. So really, I mean, I had tried pills, I tried drugs, yeah. I tried men, I tried shopping. I had all the things, I lost all the things. I've had a husband, I've had kids. I've, you know, gone to five-star resorts. Like, you know, trying to, we, we've went to the Waldorf Astoria and people like, you think that's, you've made it when you go to that. And, and it was, what is making it mean anyway? Right, right. <laughs> exactly. So I had everything and nothing worked. So once when it got to a point where I didn't even recognize myself anymore, I had no idea who I was and I was about to lose it all, which I didn't even know at that time, really, truly. I mean, I did wake up to finding, I do remember this and I forgot this, um, but I shared it on Tuesday when I shared my um, testimony. I woke up to find, I don't know how I got on my husband's phone, but I was on his phone and I found um, him looking up divorce lawyers and uh, single bedroom apartments. Oh, you know what it was? Maybe we were connected somehow. I can't remember. Anyway, I saw that search history on his phone and it nearly broke me. Um, this was five years ago. So, so I, anyway, I got to a point where it was, I, I didn't even want to, ch I just was so broken and just let it all go that all I could do was say, okay, God, like, I'm not even going to try to change any of the behavior, any of that, anything. It's just, it, I, for myself, I, I need, I just surrendered. I got down to the depths. And so the first year, you know, I got sober off of alcohol and heavy, heavy drugs, but I was still on Suboxone. I was still smoking. And I just didn't even at that point care, like what people thought what people said, nothing like that. But then when I found uh, Barn 45, like I said, I actually am an introvert, Marlo. I love being alone. Hi, Amber. Um, I really do. I like being alone. I get, I, I shared my testimony on Tuesday and yesterday I slept. I was so tired. I was exhausted and there was nothing, there was no reason to be, but I just, it takes it out of me. And so I had to just stay and relax and give myself the grace to do that. Yes. Like I don't need to have the to-do list. That's the other thing. There are, it's not a balancing act. It's not a priority. It's a right order. And God will provide the right order and the time to do everything in his time. The baseboards are not needing to be cleaned after sharing the love of Jesus, because guess what? When I die, no one's going to care about my baseboards. That's right. You've got Don't it. Care. You've got it. You know, that discernment. And it's so important because so many, you know, young mamas, mamas, whoever, whatever stage we are or what we're doing with our life, we can run ourselves Right, right into the ground with that false, with that false truth. Yeah. And, and, and my kids don't care. Right. They don't even care if they have a hot meal. They care if their mom's present. And the way I stay present is that I abide in Jesus Christ. I abide in his word. I do not get up from, from sitting in his word until I know that I'm prepared. So if my heart is fluttering, if I am already making to-do lists, if I am overwhelmed, I do not get up. Mm -hmm. You have to fight that part of your flesh. And then, you know, there is give and take. There are, you know, there are things, but that's why I simplified my life too. I got rid of, we do not need 20 water bottles. You don't need that, guys. <laughs> oh, could you send that thermo to my kitchen so that everybody yeah. hears it? Why you do we wash the one you have? Why like, do we need it 20? Right. Because then you have less clutter and then you have less dust and then you have less cleaning and and it's the same with laundry uh -huh. you do not need 25 pairs of underwear okay <laughs> like we don't need 25 bras we don't need 25 of the same shirt in every color you do not need <laughs> yes. it like i know i wear the same ones anyway why i wear black right. and gray why am i why the closet same the uh, junk drawer junk drawer let me tell you guys, i just went through mine i'm like why do i have like literally five tape measures. 
<laughs> why? Like, oh my gosh. So I got rid of some. Dusty okay. looked at me like you did what? I said, don't worry. I got, I saved the good ones, but the ones that, you know, pull out and they barely go back in like that, toss it, toss <laughs> it. You're speaking well, truth. Yes. You are speaking so frustrating. Truth. And I mean, Jesus didn't walk around. Why do you think he had so much? He had three short years, three short years. He was a busy, busy man, yes. but he had time to abide with his, with his father. He came and was quiet and alone and isolated. And that was his first and foremost. And then he was able to go out and pour out, but he was simple. Right. He didn't have 20 pairs of shoes. He didn't have 12, you know, sets of, you know, whatever those parka thingies are, like whatever they call them. I don't know. But, um, you know, we just, we're so, we're so consumed, um, yeah. with self consumed with others consumed with how we feel consumed with how others feel, how they think, how they perceive us cuts consumed with comparison, all the things. And God created us so, so genuine and so specific and for a specific purpose and loves us for who we are. Like nobody has my DNA. I think it's one. And I can't even tell you the statistics of, yeah. of like that. And that's great. Yes. But we walk around like it's, you know, something to be taken advantage of, or we yeah. want to be someone different. And I don't want to be someone different anymore. Like I like me. <laughs> I, and I love you. And so many people on here too. I just want to take a pause and say all the people that are commenting, thank you for all of your comments. You guys, you are really, I love it. accord with a lot of people you're hitting home and that's what it's about. That's what it's about is, um, it, our story, the relatability. That's what, that's what's got a uh, sprinkle pods. That's the whole, I'm loving these comments because that's what sprinkle pods is all about. It's not just the stories in the book. It's, it's your stories. It's everybody relating with the thing. Even if we're talking about getting rid of coffee cups and, and how that can just weigh our mind down anything that'll take us away from, from just abiding in Jesus yeah. and, and keeping us labeled and busy and too busy and all of that. You know, if we look, today's April 18th. Um, shout out, happy birthday to my mother-in-law. Today's her birthday, oh, Sharon. Happy Rose. birthday, mother-in-law. Yes, <laughs> today's her birthday. Uh, thank you for that, Ariel. Uh, but, you know, if we look at April 18th this year, what, what were we doing April 18th, 2023? Off the top of our head, what were we doing April 18th, 2001? We don't remember, unless we're journaling, we don't remember every single list that we completed, but we do remember in a season how mm -hmm. we felt. We yeah. remember if we were breathing or, or not breathing metaphorically. We remember if we were living or walking around with our eyes wide shut, we know that. So why do we, you know, it's, it's a rhetorical question. We all have to answer or ponder. Why do we do that to ourselves? Why are we walking around labeling ourselves? Why are we not okay? Unless, you know, all of the, there's nothing wrong with a, keeping things tidy and keeping things, um, you know, we were joking about the laundry basket and wake up and the folding the laundry and all the things, the you know, socks, but, the metaphor, like you, you can never get the same, like, and it's funny. My husband thinks that I eat, eat the socks. In fact, I'm going to just stand up. I got to do this because this is so Ariel. Cool. I have to show you, look at this. I have this, my laundry basket is a prop. And I have it right here because I'm, I'm speaking uh, tomorrow and I take my laundry basket with me. And look, I, I this goes with me everywhere. And look, you look at the yeah, socks. that's look. us. We have all these socks that do not match, and it is hilarious. Hold, it's, up. Hold it's, up, smile. <laughs> this is so funny, and they don't match. And you're like, what in the world? Where my husband is totally convinced that I must eat them or something because he's like, every time I do my laundry. I come out with the same amount of socks. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. You, but know, what that says? you know what that tells me, Ariel? Huh. He should keep doing the laundry. He's great yes, at exactly. it. Exactly. Look, 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 look what's in your own laundry. Look what's in here. Oh, there's Ephesians. Oh, but, I love that towel. This. Mm. He will. I love me some Isaiah. Crashes into beauty. Yes. So uh, the laundry basket. Yes. Um, that is funny. Laundry. We can keep talking laundry. I also, there's something else I caught earlier that you were talking about, which is one of my favorite things to talk about. And I wonder if you would just shine a little spotlight, big spotlight mm -hmm. on it is abiding, abiding. Yeah. Would you just, for anybody who doesn't know what that means, what we mean when we say that, would you expand that a little bit? 
Um, so I'm, I'm actually super grateful again. I'm, I'm going to say for joy, um, because she really did teach me how to abide and the abiding has made it easier to abide. Mm -hmm. So, and easier to know that I am abiding. So growing up and things like that and, and going through what I've gone through, I've been in the depths of despair. I've been in doing the, the greatest sin acts that you could possibly think of. And so, um, to be able to sit here today and have the, um, have the identity that I have and know that I have that identity and know that when God puts something if something comes up, so I'm going to, this is another, I'm, I'm a story person. You guys all know this. So on and Tuesday, <laughs> right. A Tuesday, I was giving my testimony at um, church and the pastor asked me when, when we were done and I'm not sure the exact wording that he used. Cause I don't know that he, but I think he said something like, you know, what, what do you feel you're being called to, or what do you see, um, you know, yourself doing like where, what, what, what's your, what's your desire? What's your heart's desire? And it was so weird because that a couple, like, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago when I posted, I posted a clip of Jackie Hill Perry, um, yes. a, a very short clip of what she was speaking at at one of her conferences. And I, and I wrote something and once I, and I, when I watched that, uh, conference of hers, what popped into my head and my heart was that someday I'm going to be alongside of her speaking. I, now that could not have come yeah. from me. Right. I, and I know that, and I have the confidence to know that that wasn't something that I came up with. It just, it wasn't, it has to come from God. And the reason I know that for a fact is because I am in his word every day. And because just the little things like the power to say no to a matcha tea, yeah, the right. power, and I'm not saying I'm walking this out perfect because my, I have the fleshly flutters, but I know where to go. And I let my emotions be indicators of what's going on in my heart. And so for him to have that, so I said it out loud and I don't feel crazy saying it. In fact, I could hashtag Jackie Hill Perry on this and be like, someday, girl, like I'm going to be up. And it's not even about the platform because it could be to a room of three people. It could be to a room of one person. But I believe that I will be standing alongside of her preaching and teaching and um, sharing the love of Jesus through the word of God. I don't teach like she does. She's She can really, really preach the word of God. But I and but I don't need to be like that. And I'm okay with that. But I do know that she abides. Yeah. That woman is in her word. And so and so am I. And the way I God has really um taught me how to abide, but also to be able to teach is through what I'm going through at the time. This is again why I don't have notes. Not just because I can't look at them and really speak because I can't. My I, my brain does not work that way, but because I'm sharing honestly and authentically of what I'm going through in the moment, which I never thought I would do. I've been a liar and a manipulator my whole entire life because I was so afraid of what people would think about me that I did not want them to get to know the real me. But now I don't care because I have found the one that identifies me and I can sit here today and be honest and authentic with what I struggle with because we all struggle, mm -hmm. but I know that I have the answer. So if that's the difference, so I can mm -hmm. sit and abide and, and it's really, truly, it's because I have the answer to, to my soul sickness. Mm -hmm. And so, and I can be lead and share my ministry can be leading with my weakness. And mm -hmm. that's what I, that's what I feel like I'm going to lead authentically and authentically means that I am human. Mm -hmm. So um, authentically anyway. means that I am human. Did you guys hear that? There are so many little clips here. <laughs> I love, I love the fleshly flutters girl. I'm using oh, it. Yeah. Fleshly flutters. Those are my little fleshly flutters, uh, flutters of the flesh. I call them. And I don't know where I came up with that, but it's true because it's not like, a. um, I don't, 
you know, they, they come up, they just flutter up. They come up out of nowhere. It's not like you can, it's like when you're stuck in traffic and someone cuts you off, your immediate reaction, some is, is, can be anger or fear. It's right. immediate. You have no control over it. Same with doing drugs. I had no control over my brain. Once I started to use the dopamine and everything, my brain was telling me, if you don't do that drug, you will not live. So there was no control over that part. So that is what I, when I say like it, it will come up. And so now I just have something that I'm already armoring up with every single day that combats that those initial flutters of the flesh. And, and the, the combat for that is exactly what you just did which is one of my passions is, is exchanging a, a lie of the enemy for the truth. Mm -hmm. And the lie was, if you don't do that, that drug, you will die. Right. Right. And we reverse that. We, when God reverses, it gives it, gives it back to us is just that you're, you're, you're not being dead. You're being alive is mm -hmm. abiding in me. Give it, mm -hmm. uh, he is such a loving father. Give it to uh, abide in me. And I will, he tells us the truth. We can replace every lie with his strength and with his courage, every enemy lie with one of his truths. It's such a beautiful exercise and it's what you're exactly what you're talking about. And you guys, do you hear the power of God in what Ariel is saying and in, in, her, in her, her spirit? Because her spirit, our spirit is the Holy Spirit within us as believers. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, it's like when we talked Philippians over the summer on Porch Pods, it's all about just cling, 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 hearing the chains falling off. Mm -hmm. And you just said something so powerful. It sent chills and it's freedom. This is truly taking a deep breath and being fully alive. When you can say a phrase like, I used to be a liar and a manipulator mm -hmm. because what? It's awesome to be able to say that and take it off of your own skin and know that God has you in that to be able to say that because that's part of the sanctification process is, mm -hmm. is surrendering, um, confessing, giving it to him. And then guess what? There's not a person on this earth that has a power over us when we can right. confess it. We, it's like the woman at the well, he took, he took the negative power away from what she was walking around sulking about. Just wanted to shine a light on that and go where you want to go with that. But that is freedom, you guys. I know a lot of you on here are believers, but if you're brand new here, it yeah. is not about the doing, the do, the, the pile of getting caught in a pile of do, do, the do, the do, yeah. the do, the label maker. I've got to be this. I've got to be this. I've got to be the perfect tennis mom. I've got to be the perfect this. I, I can't get this wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's about abiding in him and having freedom in his truth versus ours. Yeah. yeah. And, and I was researching, so I'm fascinated by the brain and, um, it has, science has proved that 30 minutes a day in your Bible changes your neuro pathways, which mm -hmm. is what it already says in the Bible, but they can actually prove that it changes your neuro pathways and it actually increases your dopamine levels and it actually increases your concentration. So when people say they sit down and they can't concentrate on reading the Bible, reading the Bible, that's the lie. You got to replace that because it will actually increase your concentration by reading it 30 minutes a day, even if you don't understand it. Even but, if you don't um, understand it. Even if even you don't, if don't understand, understand it, because I don't always understand it, but I can look back. This is why I love Facebook for no other reason other than the fact that I can look back on what I used to post and just even my verbiage, the mm -hmm. way I spoke is completely different than the way I do now. And in a very short amount of time, four very short years, because I don't feel I'm, I consider myself a baby Christian truthfully, because like I said, I knew of God, but I didn't believe in God because if I had, I would have been living by that power. And I didn't, it wasn't time it's always in his time. And, and there could have been a different way to get about where, but I'm grateful for the way that I got here and, yes. and it's never, ever, ever too late. And so I, I love the fact, and I, that's the, that's, what's exciting to me is that I don't have to walk out in fear anymore knowing that I used to be a liar and a manipulator because I've got the God of the universe that yes. now says that I'm not. He is the one that provides the power and the strength to walk out in my weakness and still share that 
authentically and vulnerably. And he covers me in that. And I am not afraid to be like that anymore where I was before. And I'm not saying this is for everybody because not everybody is going to be asked to share their whole entire life online. That's just not, that's not how he's going to have you do it. But he, that's where he has me. And I find that so fascinating that I used to be so scared to be me and that now I'm really, really raw and really open. And that's what he's called me to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, okay, again, either that like, I, I have an intimate circle that I share some really personal things with. And I, he's not asking me, you know, when I'm going through some things, like I have a, close. We have our leadership and we have, I have joy. I have people that I can share these things with, and I'm not necessarily sharing them online while I'm going through right. them all the it's time. Discernment. That's discernment. That's wisdom. Right. Right. But, no, when, but when, 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 to, when, when, to, when yes. not to, right. Exactly. And so I just think I'm like, God, only you would take a little girl that was so afraid to be uh-huh. herself so afraid to let people in to really see that weakness. Only you would take her to, to a place where she would be sharing it Mm. constantly and to give her the strength, the power, the love, the mercy, the hope to be able to share that and be okay sharing that. Like I am grateful. I can stand here today and be like, I'm so glad that I am weak. I'm so glad that I can depend on him to sit here with you. And um, this morning, truly, I didn't even know where it was going to go because I wasn't, I was starting to not feel very good. Mm. Um, And I, we've had a busy week and I've already shared my testimony and on Tuesday, which was a huge thing. It does take a lot. And so I'm like, okay, God, what what are you going to have? But just getting on here, I'm alive because he's alive. He is alive in me. And so I can rest in that. And it's, I'm so grateful. And then I have a husband that's out there working so that I can do this. I never thought in a million years that he'd be supporting me while I'm, I'm, you know, sharing my life with others. And I'm grateful. And I want people to get free. Mm -hmm. I want people to be free. I I want them to live out authentically because we're so different. We were made so different and they can reach different people than I can reach. And so I am imploring Mm -hmm. people, get alone with him, get alone in your word, read it 30 minutes a day. Just start there. Start at 30 minutes a day. That's it. And, and from there, and don't read it to try to change. Don't read it to try to get rid of a behavior. Don't read it to try to change someone else or to change your life or to change your situation. Read it to know, read to, it to be know. known, yes. to, to just sit and abide and be still because mm-hmm. when we are still, we will know. Yeah. And you know, it's, you we will find be still, be still. And no, I have my little, my little, my little bag. I, I have all these things I'm packing to take with me and you're hitting on my bag. Be still. I, and oh, no. I love that bag, Marlo. That is so cute. I bought it at a Joyce Meyer conference. Um, so cute. And, you know, speaking of Joyce Meyer, we were talking about, you know, you and, and going out there, God calling you to speak. And I wanted to go back to that because I was going to say, I remember I, I've heard Joyce Meyer talk about the fact that she was wearing her her Daisy Duke cutoff shorts and smoking her cigs and and preaching the gospel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but mm-hmm. she was older, you know. She was she was it, it. It's a journey, and look where he's brought her. And it's just amazing to think if she hadn't abided and listened and said, "I'm a a woman that can't grow tomato plants." Like I'm not a you know. I'm. She was at one point looking at the things that she not wasn't. I whispered right. and said, I didn't call you to be those things. And she's thinking, I'm smoking my cigs. I've got my Daisy Dukes. And, you know, she could have easily said, you got the wrong person. You got the wrong person. That's why this phone is right here. Cause it's my phone where I pick it up and talk about God calling me to do the things that he called me to do and going, oh my, <laughs> so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you knew how busy I was. I can't do it. So mm-hmm. I love, I love everything. Um, that you're sharing. And, um, it does feel crazy. There are some times, like I said, like with it's beautiful. Yeah. When thinking about thinking about speaking at conferences, like he put that in my heart and, and to be alongside someone like Jackie Hill Perry. Yeah. It kind of sounds a little bit nutty. I like, could see it. I it's like, see it. 
who, yeah, who, who are you? Who do you think you are? Like, and so it does feel a little crazy, but I don't care anymore. I don't care how crazy it sounds because he has saved me and I've seen the difference in my heart. So if that came into my head and my heart, who am I to tell him no? Who well, I, I say no. I love what you just said. I love that. Um, it's the, it's, that's the self. It's the fear of self righteousness. When we say, who do you think you are? Because we're our, one of our worst fears. I think that's another relatable thing is we're so fearful that people are going to think that we are being self righteous because right. we're doing it, you know, like, right. but, but we know what God's calling us. And when we learn to abide and listen to him, we know, and he will grow us into that. But the difference is between self-righteous and righteous is when we're trying to make it happen. We're not abiding mm -hmm. itself. You got to add that word self in because it's the, it's the fleshy, it's the fleshy flutters telling us to do the thing. Mm -hmm. Self-righteous is very different than righteous. Mm -hmm. The righteousness that we inherited, we inherited as believers, we inherited because of the blood of the cross. And then when he calls us to do something, we abide it's it it wipes all those fears and away. i'll share this last story yeah. before we get off because that just brought that up the self righteous and the righteous so when i first started watching the barn um and actually tara can probably attest to this i was so gung ho about meeting them about getting involved about sharing my testimony all these things i was a little too overzealous right and God told me to back up God and, and in his mercy and in his kindness, like, cause I had that desire to want to share and to talk and to, to, to help others with my testimony. And so I was eager and there was a worldly eagerness there that God had to die in me instead of a, um, a godly eagerness. There has mm -hmm. to be a godly zeal instead of a worldly eagerness. Mm -hmm. and so I still had this worldly eagerness in the beginning. And so that had to die in me. And then this godly zeal, now I'm only what, who I'm going for is God. Like I want Jesus. That's what I want the most out of anything. And I want people to know who he is, not mm -hmm. who I am. So when that changed, guess what happened? So I'm not on the barn. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. And then they asked me, I started just by being a guest. I think I've been a guest on a Thursday three times mm -hmm. before they actually asked me to be a staple on the barn for, for Tuesdays. And so, and that's what God does. So there is, we all have desires and God does place them in our, in our hearts. And so if we will just be still and wait patiently. And because he's always working something in us. And so when I let go and really just, I, I knew that was there and I knew that's what God had for me. And, and when I stopped, when I released it, you know, slowly, but surely. So I'm not going to go out and try to make going to conferences and being a preacher and, and finding, you know, Jackie Hill Perry and being like, you need to be right. up on stage with me. I'm See, not going to do that's that. That's anxiety provoking. That right. is anxiety provoking. Right. And I don't, honestly, I like being home alone. Like I, I'm, I've been telling God, I'm like, if that's really what you have me doing, that's, that actually gives me a little bit of like, I, I like, I'm kind of selfish. I do my Tuesday, but then the rest of the week is my, my family. And I don't know that I'm going to really want to travel all that much and mm -hmm. do all that much because I'm kind of selfish, <laughs> like yes. well, I'm home with my Bible and alone with yes. you, Jesus. I don't yes. want to share my time with you out with other people. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's how I feel. So he's going to have to, you know, there, where there is going to be a, and so I think that's what he's teaching me now too, is how to really be able to do things like this, but then rest. Yes. And rest and not have to go do other things. And then there's a right order. Yeah. And so, um, so there was a right order. And when he became first, everything else ordered itself. You just uh, replaced the truth with a lie. Yeah. So, yeah. so sorry, finish that. Oh no. Yeah, no, that's all I was going to say. It just, it, 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 it ordered itself. Like I don't, I don't have to really do much of anything anymore. Right. And, um, I know my limits and I know I, I, I'm very much aware I'm not parched anymore. And so because I'm not parched, I do not have to be fearful walking out because I know my own body. I know my own strengths. I know my weaknesses. I know the emotional part and the stuff that I don't know. 
God does. And so he, he gives me the, the realization, Hey, you're doing too much. Hey, that's not quite where I want you right now. You need to leave. So, and not, so I don't have to be fearful and I don't have to be tired. And when I am tired, he gives me rest. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a great place to be and mm -hmm. not be parched. I'm, I'm grateful for it there. You know, I've, I just came out of a couple of weeks of oppression Mondays. And then I just asked on YouTube, I said, Hey, could you guys just be praying for me on Mondays? Mondays are just my harder days because I'm going to be doing Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. And Satan likes to just get in there and make me not want to do it. Truthfully, there were many mornings on Mondays and Monday days that I was like, God, I do not want to get up tomorrow and do this. Now I know it's where God has me. So I knew that wasn't of him giving me that spirit of oppression almost. Mm -hmm. And so I just asked for I asked on here, I said, Hey, could you guys just be praying for me on Mondays? Cause Mondays are my hard days and it is lifted. I'm not joking for the last three, two weeks, each month I've, I've been ready and rearing to go on Tuesdays. And, and not does that. It, it is amazing. My, my day for that is Tuesdays. Cause we're on, on Wednesdays and it's, it, it's, I have to give it, I have to give it time. Uh, like just wait till you wake up and give it to God. And in this, this, scripture goes exactly in line with what you're saying about that and what you were just saying a moment ago. But one of my favorite stories is the man with the withered hand. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, his first thing he said is just op open your hand. <laughs> I love it. It's just, the, it's the, it starts with the most, yeah, basic thing, you know, right. and the man on the mat, do you want to be well? It's like, oh, <laughs> what a great question. Yeah. Open your hand. We, when we live with our hands open, just like you on Monday and me, some Tuesday nights when it's like, I, you know, we get in our flesh, like, oh, I want, it's that, it's that, you know, you can easily switch over to performance. You want to do well. Right. You don't want to let anybody down. No, he will bring it. He brings yeah. it in all of it. And what you were just talking about before and you being with Jackie Hill Perry, if he said it, building a cubby hole, I don't know the first thing about staining right. all, all of it, open hands. So that's a good place to end um, this mm -hmm. part of it. And I have a Sparkly bag question for you. I love sparkly bag. I, I love it. I'll have this to pick for you. I'll have to pick for you if that's okay. But is there anything before we do this? Um, I draw just an everyday fun question out of the sparkly bag and um, and just learn something else about, about you. But is there anything else you want to add? Before? No, I just am grateful that you guys even want to listen to us. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm like thinking, you know, do you even like to hear your own voice? I don't like to hear my own voice, but I am grateful because I do know that I've found the hope. I do know that I've, I, I know, and I know, like I know, like I know. And so I am grateful that I get to share that and, and share that with others. I just want others to know him as well. That's right. That is my heart. It's been my heart and it's very, very simple. Um, it's hard, but it's simple. So. Yeah, so true. It's so true. Okay, well, I'm going to pick a question right out of here, if that's okay with you. Yep. Any question? Oh, let's see. I'll dig Any deep. question? <laughs> Any question? Uh-oh, that's scary. What are these questions? I, like? I know. I didn't tell you about this. No, you did not. But that's oh, okay. okay. This is fun. What is a fun fact about you that we may not know? Ooh. Well, now we know. Uh, I'll give you some time to think. I will tell you what I just learned is that you love matcha tea. I do. I learned that about you. <laughs> I do. I love matcha tea. I love, um, I don't know why I'm obsessed with, well, I'm obsessed with tea, but matcha tea in, in particular. Um, okay. So a fun fact that fun is really, fact. okay. Well, I don't know if this is like fun fact. Well, I'm actually super goofy. I, they, I'm weird. So my kids call me weird. Like, and, um, I am like, I don't, I don't know. We're going like, to rebrand that. We're going to rebrand sarcastic and um, what? Say I'm again. sarcastic, very sarcastic, but I'm weird. Like I do some really weird, I, there's no fence in my yard. I mean, metaphorical fence. I always cross the line. I'm constantly like, I don't know. 
but I don't really know if there's really anything fun about me, except for the fact that I really am starting to learn what I do and don't like. Like, I do not want to go down a mountain with a board strapped to my feet on an ice mountain. Like, who would want to learn how to snowboard? Not I. I used to want to do all these things so that I could be cool, but now I can be the cool mom and I don't have to snowboard because I'm weird and I always cross that line and they are drawn to me. I don't even know why, but but my friends, my kids' friends, and I'm super open and I let them talk to me about anything. So, I mean, any, any, any. I, I love, you know, I, I said the same thing to my kids when they snowboard, uh, proud of you, but why, what do you want to do? I don't know. Let me ask. Okay. Let me, let me pull up. uh, Let me find a fun fact. Another fun fact. What is the uh, most unique job you've ever had? Ooh. Oh, oh, this one's easy. So I'm a nurse, but I'm, I was a psych nurse. So I worked in a locked down facility with psych patients. I had about 50 psych patients and, um, a lot of them were like schizophrenic and, Mm -hmm. and like one thought they were the president of the United States. One was our resident naked man. Um, one was one of my favorites. She, I, I mean, and those were those, that was my most unique job, but it was also the job that I loved the most as well. Oh, I can imagine. I loved those because they had no choice. They had no control over their, their, bra- their brains. I mean, and it was fascinating to me that, you know, these people were thinking that they were the president of the United States or, you know, one, they're just, they were fast. It was fascinating, but they were some of the sweetest, most kindest people too, even though they were yes. just they were, they were out of their minds, but I loved it. It was, it was unique. I had to stop working there. Um, but yeah, I loved it. It was, it was fascinating to me and I loved those people. And you know, what's interesting about that is that was a precursor to your finding Jesus and your own story of Mm -hmm. him redeeming you from false identity Mm -hmm. before you're experiencing these people who are, uh, feeling that living that for other reasons, but then well, and a lot of them had drug induced psychosis. So when I did meth, I, I ended up with drug induced psychosis, mm-hmm. uh, um, hearing voices and things like that. And it was voices of my children and voices of my husband. And, you know, I heard all those things. So, um, I have a lot of, a lot of empathy for people on drugs, a lot of empathy, a lot of empathy on people that don't even do drugs that have hear voices or see things or just tons of empathy because it's, it's real and it is scary. It was probably the scariest thing that has ever happened to me. Truly. It's definitely all drugs are the devil's drug, but this one in particular is the devil's drug because it wasn't like I was hearing just fake voices. I was actually audibly hearing the voices of my children audibly oh, my goodness Ariel. and they were not speaking to me they weren't even in the room so oh, well, that to me is scary that your brain can do that that a drug can can do that to you well and then people end up stuck that way so. anybody that's listening and has somebody that is struggling with that has struggled with that doesn't know jesus you're just a shining beautiful example of his hope his redemption his mm-hmm. forgiveness it's possible yes well, sweet friend, I am so thankful for you. Would you mind praying for us? Yes, I will pray. Okay. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your sunshine and your grace and your hope and your mercy. And um, just that we can sit here and gather and with freedom to worship you. This is worship, being able to speak about you, being able to tell about your glory and all that you've done in my life. Thank you for giving me that supernatural boldness that um, I truly know that I'm walking in the truth that I believe the truth now, that I know the truth, that you are the truth, you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that I'm on that narrow road. And I pray that anybody listening today that um, just just doesn't know, that just is scared or doesn't want to walk this way, that they could look at my life and realize that um, they want that joy and they want that peace. And, and it isn't always easy. It's not, it's not, um, it's a daily moment by moment um, abiding in you. And, uh, but it is grace filled. It is uh, highly favored. It's better than I could have ever imagined. So um, we thank you for that. We thank you for your son and the blood 
and uh, the cross and that you have finally turned my story into a testimony of your grace and your love and your hope and your mercy. And um, we love you. We give you all the glory in your name. We pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, sweet Ariel. I love you. you. I'm welcome. so thankful. This was incredible. I know it's going to bless hearts. I love doing this. It's so much yeah. fun with you. Isn't it fun? I love what You're you very said. good at this. Oh. You do know this, right? Like Thank really, you. I don't, I could not, I mean, I'm sorry guys. I'm not the best listener. <laughs> I'm, working, <laughs> I'm working on it. I really am. But you listen so well and you're able to have so. Can you hear that ringing? Yeah. What is that? That's my funny. My husband's calling me. Oh, hi, hubby. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And I'm going to, I'm going to uh, grab that clip of you saying I'm a good listener and I'm going to play it for my kids because I will thank you for that compliment. But I'm telling you, uh, only Jesus, because I, woohoo, I'm like shiny object. I'm always, and I, I, I do have to focus, but I, I do love it because I really do. Um, you know, I, I just love doing this and I love being able to share other people's stories and talk about Jesus. That's right. So anyway, thank you, sweet friend. And thank you to all of you for your interaction and your comments and and sharing in our conversation. That's always and maybe so fun. Rachel, when I get there this year, I'll actually meet you because I've met I've met a lot of uh Lori's family, but I haven't met her, Rachel and and her son yet. So I, I was able to meet Rachel not long ago and she's gonna be on a sprinkle pod coming up. I'll have so to I'm so that. excited. Okay, Ariel, hold on one sec. I want to chat yep. with you for a minute. But for now, bye, everybody. We'll see bye, you. Bye, guys. See you next week. Same.